Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about um, IBM Data Power versions and deployment options. If you have seen my earlier videos, you know that Data Power appliances, they used to be a family of appliances coming in various forms like XI52, XP62, XG45, XS40, and many more each having their own uh, use cases. However, with this model, IBM has faced difficulty and hence they have changed the way these appliances are getting marketed. Now, we, IBM no longer sell these different types of appliances like XI52, XB62, etc. Rather, they sell a common hardware platform called IDG. IDG stands for IBM Data Power Gateway. This is also called a gateway appliance. The idea is that you have a common hardware platform on top of which you can add modules that you need. So when you first buy an IDG, it comes with certain set of modules. However, assume that over a period of time, your requirements grow and you also want B2B modules, you can request that to IBM and through Passport Advantage page, you will be able to download that as a firmware update. That goes straight into your IDG and you will have B2B module in your existing IDG platform. So this is the strategy that IBM is following so far as far as IBM Data Power Gateway is concerned. So no longer older appliances like XI52 or XP62, etc. Rather, only one hardware platform called IDG. Let's talk about IDG versions. Here, the word version does not mean the version in a sense um, that, we, that, that we call for uh, the software versions. No. These versions mean different types or different ways in which these appliances can be installed. So you have a physical appliance which you can see on your screen. It comes as a hardware appliance. It sits in your data center. It is typically characterized by specialized hardware for XML and crypto processing. It has Intrusion Detection System, IDS, against malicious tampering of hardware. It has TPM chip that decrypts the firmware at startups, something we call Secure Boot. And it has got a hardware HSM module, which is FIPS 142 Level 3 compliant. What is the use case? People typically use it when uh, they have a data center and uh, they require HSM feature and full control over the hardware. That's the physical appliance. Physical appliances are typically bulky and they need data center. Not every company has the data center and companies who are adopting cloud first strategy, perhaps physical appliance may not be suitable for them. Next one is the virtual appliance. It is an appliance where the entire appliance functionality is packaged in a software form. You can deploy it on any virtualization platform, Linux OS or containers. Now, since it supports Linux OS and containers, you can deploy it on any cloud. It's a low cost option for application development and testing. And when I say application development and testing, it should not be confused with the fact that there is no production licenses available. They are available. And you can get them, of course, from IBM. So, things to remember here is that they run on virtualization platform as a VM or they could run as a process on Linux operating system or you could have an appliance in a Docker format running on your Kubernetes cluster. Virtual appliance types. 
VM-based appliance, as I mentioned, it installs on VMware hypervisor. So you need VMware hypervisor for this VM-based appliance. It comes in a small standard and enterprise install configurations. These configurations differ in the fact that they have increasingly large memory and CPU footprints. It has everything but no HSM. You can customize resources like RAM, disk space, and number of Ethernet interfaces. They are easy to deploy and administer, and they have a RAID configuration available as well. Remember, these type of appliances are suitable if you, if you have VMware-based ecosystem and you do not need HSM. If you need HSM, you have to go back to the physical appliance. Now comes Linux-based appliances. These get installed on Linux as RPM package. So Linux that supports RPM package will be the supported ones. Remember that it doesn't come as a Debian package. It runs as a single root process. DNS settings cannot be changed and they are essentially derived from resolve.conf. RAID configuration is certainly possible and it can certainly be deployed on any cloud environment where the Linux can run. The use case for this type of appliances are where you need rapid deployment. For example, you can have an AMI where you can package uh, these appliances, uh, these appliance images, and then you can spawn at will. They are very flexible. Along the way, they have some restrictions as well, which you should be aware of. Now the next one and the last one is containerized appliances. Containerization is in fashion. And it is, it is in trend for good reasons. It provides the required flexibility and it is very cloud native thing. Data power comes as a containerized appliance as well. It comes as a Docker image. You can create your own application image. But remember that despite being supported on various platforms, like it can run on OpenShift, Kubernetes, Red Hat OpenShift, um, Microsoft Azure, Rosa, Cloud Pack. These are the supported platforms, but it has some limitations as well. If you have a large use case where you are running mainframe connectivity through the data power, you have to be cautious about it. It is not that it doesn't support mainframe connectivity, but it doesn't support something called IMS callout handler. So if in your case, you're using IMS callout handler, you will not be able to upgrade it. You cannot change DNS and Ethernet interfaces. Remember, on uh, virtual appliance, VMs, that run on VMware platform, I mentioned you can customize the number of Ethernet interfaces that you have. In fact, you can have more than one Ethernet interfaces there. Here, you cannot customize that. You cannot change the DNS settings. All these settings are inherited from the host where the container runs. The beautiful part here is that it can be deployed on K8s, OpenShifts, and other platform that you see on the right-hand side. This is also called data power operator instance, and they're also known as data power CI-CD appliances. They are very flexible in nature, support full CI-CD cycle, and unlike previous versions of the data power, like VM-based or Linux-oriented appliances, these appliances can follow a fully automated build and deployment uh, cycle. So that's what is containerized appliances. Now, this is the end of it. I would like to point out that 
most of the people who have did who have used data power appliances they think of it as a legacy appliance but in general it's not true in a sense that data power has moved with the pace of technology and now we have the data power appliances that can be fully deployed on cloud so if your organization is moving towards cloud so can data power do that's all for this video thank you